Hello and welcome to Talk Back, the show where we ask tough, compelling questions from tough, compelling people. Exactly 60 years ago this week, India airlifted thousands of its troops into the Valley of Kashmir to start one of the most bitter disputes of the modern age. Our guest tonight represents one of the most important elements of that dispute, the Kashmiri insurgency. He is the supreme commander of the Hezbul Mujahideen, the single largest militant faction actively engaged in Kashmir. The Hezb claims to have thousands of fighters ready to lay down their lives in the name of jihad against what they see is Indian oppression. Some call him Pir Sahab. We call him the commander. Supreme Commander Sayyid Salahuddin. Yes. Welcome to Talk Back. Thank you. Some say that the days of the jihad are over. What do you think? I think they are very wrong because so far there is illegal occupation and despotic domination of imperialistic powers upon the suppressed people. The armed struggle will continue to go on. It will never stop. But some say that your former benefactors have taken a U-turn on you. I did not agree with this. Uh, really, our uh, this whole struggle of uh, jihad, our freedom struggle is purely 110% indigenous struggle. We have been fighting it on our own grounds, with our own resources, with a political, diplomatic, and moral support of Pakistan being basic part to our Kashmir issue. And this support continues. But the reports, and there have been wide-ranging reports, that there's fighters from the Pakistani side buried all over the country. Uh, uh, in this respect, uh, my submission is that the people who have come from Pakistan's side to participate physically in ongoing freedom struggle in Kashmir, they are not really Pakistanis, nor they are foreigners. They are all the people who belong to the families who have migrated from Indian held Kashmir to this part of Pakistan due to India's continuous and constant suppression and oppression. More than five, uh, five and a half a million people who are of Kashmir origin, they live in the territory under the control of Pakistan. So you're saying if, if they go, and they participate in the ongoing struggle. They are, they are not foreigners, nor they are Pakistanis. So you're saying everybody who fights with you in Kashmir is just Kashmiri? Is just Kashmiri. By his origin, by his relationship, by his blood relation, his family is there, his kithiskins are there, his total relationship is there. It is this, uh, this uh, ceasefire line which has bisected our city into two parts, forcibly. Is Kashmir a political problem or a military problem? It is both. It is really, basically, it is a political problem. If you are willing to acknowledge that it is a political as well as an armed struggle, why are you not open to political dialogue with India today? Definitely, we have been always in favor of dialogue with at present. The problem is India is not ready to accept Kashmir as a dispute. And India is not ready to accept this issue in its historical perspective. It is a ground reality. But many say that the ground realities have changed today, considering President Musharraf's four points which he pitched to India. And that included the very important point of India and Pakistan moving back from their old positions. Where do you think you stand? Uh, Where do you uh, think uh, the jihad uh, stands? Definitely. As far as my personal uh, knowledge, I know much about this Mr. President who made a historical shift from it national consistency satans, 60 years old stems regarding Kashmir, that Kashmir is a disputed territory and it, it is ultimate future is to be resolved ultimately through a palibisit or a right of self-determination. The President of this pragmatic approach was an attempt to make a breakthrough in this uh, six years old frozen issue. But unfortunately, this was our rightly rejected by Indian side. There was no response, no reciprocal airline, not a zero. 
But forget India. Where does the jihad stand today in light of that four-point agenda? Now it is our our struggle. President Musharraf may support, may not support. We have been fighting against this illegal occupation right from 27 October 1948 till now. Do you feel Pakistan? We have, we have shed the blood of half a million. But do you feel, sir, do you feel that Pakistan has abandoned you today? Uh, Pakistan has not left us because this, I think the Pakistan, the state and the people, uh, 16 crore people of Pakistan, they morally, they diplomatically, they politically support, they have been, they are supporting because they have never told the government of Pakistan have never told even a single time but Pakistan, that we are giving any military support to the Kashmir movement. But Pakistan has moved back from its former position on Kashmir with President Musharraf's four-point agenda. But is that, uh, that, that Mr. President has made it clear. I agree with you, Mr. but Mr. President made it clear that this is a, this is a pragmatic approach just to make a breakthrough. If, 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 if India does not, he has made it clear, if India does not respond, then our position is the same, which is at, and signed by, provided by United Resolution, that is right to celebrate a nation. Now the question is, for the, for the time being, if Mr. President Musharraf moves back from its historical or constant, or consistent position, it will tell no difference upon our struggle. We will still continue. We have our liberated pop Azad Kashmir, which can serve us as a base camp. We have every moral and legal right to use our Azad Kashmir as a base camp. But I assure you, the 16th crore people of Pakistan are with this movement, supporting us, politically, morally, diplomatically, by every cause, because they have a sentimental attitude with our cause. But there would be people, sir, who disagree with you, because there's polls out there, there's studies out there, which show that Kashmir is no longer a core issue between Pakistan and India. In fact, a recent poll taken by news organizations, ours included, said that most Pakistanis want a solution to Kashmir. Most Kashmiris want a solution to Kashmir, but it's not necessarily a pro-Pakistan solution. It is really that in the, during the past few years, right from after 9-11, the global scenario has changed so much, very much, and affecting Pakistan's Kashmir, Kashmir policy also. In this respect, there is a shift to the extent that the government of Pakistan are Pakistani policymakers have adopted line that if India is of the 